What's up, guys? Brett Apple here from DailyFanMMA.com, back with another UFC Quick Picks here on the Mayo Media Network. Going to be talking about UFC 268. Today, we have Usman vs. Covington in the main event. Zhang vs. Namajunas is our co-main event. It is really another fantastic card, potentially even better than last weekend. Uh, 14 fights on the slate, I believe. I'm going to give you my favorite cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and my fade of the week for this event. Before I get to that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below who your favorite play is in the 9K range this week, excluding Kamara Usman. There's uh, six other pretty interesting options in the 9K range. I'm going to talk about a couple of them. But uh, should be a high-scoring card, a fun event, and without further ado, let me get into my cash gameplay of the week, which is going to be Kamara Usman at 9.3K. All right, for cash games this week, I like Usman at 9.3K. I also like Covington um, at 6.9K if you're going to use a fighter from that bottom end. I think stacking this fight is viable. In cash games, I would not do it in tournaments, even though we saw Yan and Sanhagen come out on the optimal lineup in tournaments. Last week, Usman is the favorite at minus 300. Of course, this is a rematch, so we do have a, um, a better sample size than other fights. And Usman scored very, very well against Covington in the first fight that went nearly five full rounds. Usman was able to land 175 significant strikes two knockdowns uh, neither side attempted any takedowns which is pretty interesting neither side got any control time neither side got any non-significant strikes but i do think we're going to see this fight take place at a high pace once again and ultimately uzman does have potential to wrestle and grapple if he wants to he still averages 3.27 takedowns per 15 minutes i don't think he's going to take down and hold down covington for long stretches of time covington defend takedowns at 75 percent but uzman does have some control some takedown capability and he's proven he can strike at a high pace too i mean 175 significant strikes um over nearly 25 minutes is just such an incredible pace averages 4.12 significant strikes per minute absorbs 2.86 and Covington's going to push a pace here I mean he knows that's the 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 best avenue to defeat Usman he's not just going to let him uh sit back at range and and throw the more effective shots because Usman is a more effective striker than Covington on a strike per strike basis Usman's earned five knockdowns in his last four fights, of course, coming off two knockout victories. I don't necessarily think this fight's going to end quickly. I mean, Gilbert Burns and Covington are not necessarily on the same level durability-wise. This fight's projected to last, you know, the over four and a half rounds is minus 130. Fight goes to, to, to decision is minus 115. So we're projecting this fight to last, you know, several rounds. And... As a minus 300 favorite with a potential to wrestle, with a potential to strike at a high pace, I mean, Usman's really hard to ignore at 9.3K. And it's not even like he's 9.5 or 6K, like some other fighters in this range. Um, he's affordable. I definitely think you can make the argument that Covington is the value side on the money line because Usman's implied at you know 75% here, and he lost two of the first four rounds against Covington in their first fight. And say what you will about how the fifth round ended, uh, the first four rounds were very competitive, and Colby even won round four after getting his jaw broken. So to think Usman's just going to run away with this from the start, I, I wouldn't be so sure. I think this fight could be competitive, and that's why Covington priced at 6.9K. I mean, he's hard to ignore as well. He's not going to score exceptionally well in a loss. I don't think he put up... 57 points in a loss versus Usman last time, and that's a lot of points for 6.9K, but that's not going to get you on the optimal lineup in tournaments. In cash games, that's more than enough, So, which is why I think stacking up this fight is certainly viable. And if you want to play Covington solo in tournaments because you think he's underpriced, because you think he has a chance to beat Usman over 25 minutes, that's perfectly fine. I'll probably do that to some degree as well, and I think he is live in this spot. However, from a cash game perspective, we're looking at safety. Usman is one of the biggest favorites on the board at minus 300. He has a 
uh, you know, some chance to win inside the distance. Plus 145 inside the distance is a, a pretty strong number. The ability to grapple, the ability to strike. He's a very strong cash game play on this slate at 9.3K. Usman will be my cash game play of the week. Moving on to tournaments, I'm going to stick here in this 9K range and talk about Ian Gary, who is making his UFC debut. And, you know, there, I think you can target pretty much any fighter in this range, which is why I am asking you to comment below who your favorite play in the 9K range is, because I think Burgos, Pereira, Bagdasarian, Usman, Hawes, Gary, and Jacoby are all viable in one way or the another. I'm actually going to give out a fade of the week in this range as well, though I don't feel super comfortable about it. Gary's my tournament play of the week. He's making his UFC debut here against Jordan Williams. And Gary's a future star, maybe not the maybe not be maybe may not be correct but it, he certainly is a blue chip prospect to some degree i think at age 23 7 and 0 professionally the cage warriors champion and he's just really good for his age i mean it's kind of that simple you there's you know i watch so many prospects i watch a lot of tape and you know gary sort of pops out on film he he looks extremely athletic especially compared to fighters his age. He's now training at Sanford MMA, which is a great camp. He has, you know, excellent striking technique and is a pretty physical wrestler and grappler himself. We haven't seen him tested enough to the point where I can say, okay, this is exactly where he's weak and this is exactly what, where his holes are. And so as he fights in the UFC, we're going to be able to tell, right? He's not just going to wipe through his entire competition uh, for the rest of his career. Welterweight's a very, very stacked. Um, he's welterweight, right? Let me double check this. Um, yeah, okay. So his last fight was went went five full rounds at welterweight. So yeah, I mean, welterweight's just a stacked division. So it's not like he's going to have a run to the, the, the title anytime soon, but I think he's in a pretty strong matchup here against Jordan Williams. And the odds indicate that as well. Gary is the favorite at minus 400. And he has far and away the best inside distance line on this entire slate at minus 175. And he should have, at the very least, technical striking and technical grappling advantages over Williams. Williams is like a, a tough guy and he can push a high pace. But, you know, he's... He gave up 175 significant strikes to his opponent in a loss on the Contender Series. He lost to Nasruddin Imavov in his UFC debut, and he was submitted by Mickey Gall in the first round um, in July. And I, I just I feel like Gary has potential to hurt him on the feet and potentially take him down, control him, hunt for a submission. Um, this isn't the safest fight in the world for Gary because Williams will can be tough will push a pace has the ability to land strikes in volume and maybe Gary's just untested maybe he just hasn't faced an opponent who can dish it out but I, I just I really believe in his technique like he throws a powerful jab which is something that you know many fighters in this division cannot even do I respect his kicking game I think he's really physical and a really strong athlete and I think he's a pretty quality wrestler and grappler, too. So he should have advantages everywhere. Um, Gary has won five times inside the distance in seven pro fights. Uh, one by submission, four by knockout. And with the inside distance line at minus 175, I just don't think he can be ignored at 9.5K. I don't think any other fighter in this top end even has an inside distance line better than plus 100. So minus 175 is a clear standout. That means he has a better chance than most to win inside the distance. Winning inside the distance is the best opportunity to top 100 points on DraftKings. And I don't think the public's going to be all over him either. He's going to be a hot prospect. He's got that nice um, Irish accent. But Kamara Usman is in the same range. Jacoby, Phil Hawes are priced above and below him. Bagdasarian's an interesting, an interesting name. You know, Gaith G, Pereira, Burgos, they're all going to draw attention. So I'm spreading my exposure out in this range. I don't think Gary's going to be overwhelmingly popular, but from a metric standpoint, he stands out. 
very likely to win, very likely to win inside the distance, which should produce a high fantasy score, and that's going to make Gary my tournament play of the week. Very excited to see what he's all about in the UFC. All right, moving on to my salary play of the week. I'm going to roll the dice on Frankie Edgar at 7.4K. And look, you, there's many salary options you can use below the mid-range, and a lot of them are obvious. Like, obviously, Michael Chandler has some upside. I think a lot of people are going to go to Covington. I think a lot of people are going to go to Billy Quarantillo. It's not that Edgar's the standout in this range, but I think he's underpriced at 7.4K, and I think he has a very reasonable bull path to victory against Marlon Vera, who I've bet against and lost probably 100 times, so this will be number 101, I'm expecting. However, you know, Edgar's only plus 125 on the betting line, and his metrics rate out better than Vera's, which is something that's important to me. Edgar lands 3.7 significant strikes per minute, absorbs 2.71 vera lands 3.91 absorbs 4.08 even to this point in his career vera still can't even land more strikes than he absorbs 51 percent striking defense edgar 66 percent striking defense metrics far in favor of edgar here on the grappling side Edgar's a better wrestler. I mean, Vera defends takedowns at 69%. Edgar defends at 65%. Neither of them are, are elite defensive wrestlers at this stage, but Edgar can actually land takedowns. He averages 2.28 per 15 minutes. Vera doesn't even average one takedown per 15 minutes. Vera's been taken down by, you know, the, the majority of his competition, even weak opponents. He's been taken down by Guido Canetti, by Nolan Hernandez just got taken down by Davey Grant in his last fight. So Edgar has some grappling opportunities. Edgar's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I don't, I don't think Vera's going to be wrapping up a guillotine on him and or throwing up a triangle from guard and, and finishing him. The big concern, obviously, with Edgar is the durability, and that's the only reason why he's the underdog here. And I'm not saying that's not fair because I think I even picked Marlon Vera to win by knockout here. It just feels like... Edgar's been getting hurt and finished very easily in recent years. And in his last six fights, he's lost inside the distance in round one three times. So I think there's a pretty decent chance that Vera clocks him in the first round or two and finishes the fight. Like, that is very realistic. So this is not a dig on Vera's DraftKings potential either. I think Vera's an interesting tournament play at 8.8K. However... Edgar's a, Edgar's a technical boxer. He's very experienced. He just went five rounds with Pedro Munoz in, uh, last August. He's got a wrestling background. His metrics rate out better than Vera. He's got way more experience. All these things I've, I've mentioned over and over again. He has a path to a decision. I don't think Edgar's going out there and knocking Vera out. I don't think Edgar's going out there and submitting Vera but I think there's a reasonable chance he can keep this fight competitive at range. He can mix in a couple takedowns, edge rounds, and win a decision. If he can survive, his path to a decision is viable. Even if you don't think it's super likely, he's only plus 125 on the betting line at 7.4K. That's a value. At the very least, Edgar's a secondary tournament play for me, uh, a fighter who has grappling upside that will allow him to exceed value in a victory. If some of these other boomer bus fighters like Chandler, Quarantillo, whoever, Vergara, if, if they don't win inside the distance, they're probably not winning at all. So Edgar's an interesting option for me. He's going to be my salary play at 7.4K. All right. And finally, my fate of the week. This is, I mean, this is really tough because I, I I don't think he's a fade in the literal sense, but I'm going to go with Dustin Jacoby at 9.6K because he's too expensive. I mean, the strength of this 9k range and below is just too high for me to consistently pay up to 9.6k like i've mentioned we already talked about vera i think justin gaethje is obvious burgos is fighting at a very high pace pereira's got early knockout upside bagdasarian's got early knockout upside kamara uzman we've already talked about phil hawes early knockout upside ian gary we've already talked about those are six or seven fighters priced below Jacoby. So it just, it puts Jacoby in this spot at 9.6K where he really has no choice but to earn a first round 
knockout in order to be competitive with the optimal lineup. And even if he does so, I'm still not certain he ends up on the optimal lineup. Anyways, he's coming off a first round knockout victory against Darren Stewart, scored 106 points. I don't think 106 points is enough at 9.6K on this slate. There's going to be too many big scores. And Jacoby, you know, we talked about the minus 175 inside distance line for Gary. Jacoby, he's a minus 400 favorite over John Allen, and he is plus 105 inside the distance. Plus 105 inside the distance is not bad in a vacuum, but comparatively, it's pretty poor um, when we're talking about minus 175 price right below him and Usman price right below that. So I think Jacoby's a better kickboxer than Allen. I, I think he probably wins a comfortable victory. I think there's a decent chance he can win inside the distance, but Allen is relatively tough. He's never lost by knockout in, a, in his career. He's been submitted a few times. I don't think Jacoby's going to really be testing him on the ground. If anything, it's going to be Allen who's going to be trying to land takedowns. I expect Jacoby to be able to keep this fight at range, outstrike Allen, probably um, you know, land more effectively, land higher volume, and win by decision or by knockout. But it's it, it's a price. It's a price play. And at 9.6K, if he doesn't win this fight in round one, I don't think he's going to be competitive at all with the optimal lineup. And even if he does win in round one, I still think there's a chance he gets beaten out or pushed off because he's too expensive. So when I'm looking at this top end, I want to spread my exposure out. I think Jacoby's viable in like you know as a secondary option if you're you know, want to play two out of 10 lineups with him. But generally speaking, if you have a limited number of lineups, I, this is not a fight or a fighter where I think you have to force action on. Allen's way overpriced at 7.8K. I think Jacoby's overpriced at 9.6K. I'm going to be targeting the lower end 9K range and upper 8K range more heavily in tournaments. And that is going to make Jacoby my fade of the week. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's UFC Quick Picks. Thank you for the support. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, Brett Appley, double T, double P, dailyfanmma.com for all your DraftKings breakdowns, needs. Got a full podcast coming up this evening, uh, rankings, projections, betting content, all the usual good stuff. Thanks for, uh, to Pat and the team for having us on the channel. Once again, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and until next week, best of luck in your contest. Stay safe out there. We'll talk to you all soon. Peace.